Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll begin our exploration of the law of excluded middle. This is another one of those rules of inference that middle. This is another one of those rules of inference that varies depending on whether you use classical logic or the intuitionistic or constructivist logic. The law of excluded middle is one that says at any time in a proof, that is, even if there are no premises or no assumptions uh, at the points that you're working at, at any time you can deduce a formula disjoined with the negation of the formula. And that is a derived rule that's called the law of excluded middle. The reason it's called excluded middle is that you can think of it as either the formula is true or the formula is not true. And intuitionists disagree that this should be a rule because by intuitionistic or constructivist logic, when you arrive at a place in a proof, you should either have proved the formula or you should have proved the negation of the formula. And they think that it's unreasonable to have this. However, in our classical logic, we'll use this a lot. Let's try using um, disjunction, introduction, and proofs using contradiction. Let's try to um, prove uh, a theorem that is one instance of this. Suppose that our theorem is that either P is true or P is false. And this, because there are no premises, we can't actually begin our proof with any number. So what we'll do is what the only thing we can do is we can write our conclusion, which is P or not P. And when we look at the structure of this, we see that we could treat it either as a disjunction or we could treat it as a formula on its own. If we treat it as a disjunction, that doesn't immediately seem to be a very fruitful line of reasoning because um, if we treat it that way, um, we either have to demonstrate P or we have to demonstrate not P, and it's not clear how we would do either of those. Of the remaining possibilities, let's select proof by contradiction. And in proof by contradiction, we begin with our assumption box. We'll write the reason for the assumption box being proof by contradiction. And we then write the negation of the formula as the top line. This will now be line one of our proof, and that will be it is false that either P is true or P is false. So that's an assumption. We write it because it's a proof by contradiction. We write the bottom symbol at the end. And then we review what we have and say, what could I possibly do at this point? And if I'm to arrive at a contradiction and the only line in my proof is the negation of a formula, then in order to have reached this, I have to have the unnegated form of that formula on its own line in the proof. I will write that. So I say P or not P. And if I have this assumption, and if I'm able to deduce this line, then I will reach a contradiction, and then the proof by contradiction will be complete. Now, in order to demonstrate this, I have to either demonstrate P or demonstrate not P, and then use disjunction introduction. I'll choose to demonstrate not P. And that would mean that this line would follow from whatever number this is 
and the rule would be disjunction, introduction, type 2. I now explore this, so this is now my goal, and this is the only line that I have to work with. So, in order to arrive at this, it looks as though I'm going to have to use another kind of proof involving contradiction. So, I will open up a box. Oh, the reason that I'm doing that is that the form of this goal line is it's the negation of a formula. And so, what I would do is I would write my box. I would say that this is the rule I'm going to use is negation introduction. I write the unnegated formula as the first line in the box. So that is P. It gets line 2. And this is now an assumption. I then write the bottom symbol here. And I say, given my new assumption and all preceding lines of the proof that are within scope, what can I do? And here I see I have P, and then what I'm aiming at is, a, is the bottom symbol, is a contradiction. And I see, oh, I could, I could arrive at this unnegated formula by taking P and using disjunction introduction with another formula. So if I wrote P or not P, then that would be the unnegated form of this. I would have a contradiction and I would be complete. And yes, I can write that because that would follow from line two using disjunction introduction type one. And now I've reached, I've filled in all of the lines until the final line. So that means I have achieved the final line. And that is, this bottom symbol is arrived at because I have removed this negation. So that comes from line three, line one, using negation elimination. I've now completed the box. I can now fill in the line number for this. That is line 5. And its reasoning is the box that begins at line 2 and ends at line 4. This is now line 6. And it comes from disjunction introduction type 2 of the preceding line, which is 5. This is now line 7 and it is arrived at by, again, um, it comes from negating, from removing this negation. So that is negation elimination, and I've used the positive form is line six, the negative form is line one. I've now completed this box. I can now assign a number to this, which is eight. And the reason for writing it is the reasoning that begins at line 1 and ends at line 7. 1 through 7. Proof by contradiction. And my proof is now complete. If we stand back, we see that this is slightly odd. We see that this term, P or not P, is actually used three times. It's used deep in an assumption box, it's used shallow in an assumption box, and it's used at, uh, as the conclusion of our sequent, and our, of our proof. These are intermediate and technical methods that we use to arrive at the proof. This is the conclusion. So now, let's return to the law of excluded middle. The reason that we can use the law of excluded middle is that any time we want to introduce the disjunction of a formula and its negation, instead of doing eight lines, which we now have a schema for, 
we have a, that is we have a methodology that can be mechanically repeated instead of mechanically repeating these eight lines we simply write the uh, law of excluded middle and that ends this session